Hi. In this video, I'll show you how to install, configure, and run automated test cases defined in LeapTest as part of a Jenkins build definition. The community around LeapTest has developed an open source native plugin for Jenkins that allows easy integration to LeapTest, and I will walk you through the steps involved in making it run. I'll start by giving an overview to outline the components in the solution. On the left, we have a Jenkins server with a project defined. The project contains a build definition that is built up of build steps of various kinds. One could be to check out all code from a repository or to copy a number of files to a specific destination. Using the leap test plugin, you can define a leap test build step. When the build step is executed as part of a build, the plugin will use the leap test rest API to trigger a leap test schedule. A schedule contains information about a number of test cases that should be triggered on a number of environments, which are in fact machines and devices. Once all the test cases in the schedule has run on the environments defined, the result of the test are pushed back to the leap test plugin and added into Jenkins. So let's start with the beginning. I have already installed the newest available version of Jenkins from Jenkins.io. I'm running it on my local 64-bit Windows 10, but it could have been in Linux as well. It's the same procedure. To install the LeapTest Jenkins plugin, I start by downloading it from github.com slash customatics. All links and details can be found in the description to this video, including the link to this repo. On the GitHub page, I select the Jenkins plugin. This plugin has been verified to work with version 1.635 of Jenkins and newer. I download the HPI file, which is the one I need for the installation, from the target folder. Once downloaded, I can open Jenkins and navigate to the Manage Plugin section. I choose Advanced, and in the Upload Plugin section, I select the plugin file I just downloaded. Like this. When I click Upload, I select that Jenkins can restart as part of the installation process. Installation is now completed and the plugin is now installed. When I click somewhere in here, it probably is going to recycle Jenkins. Once Jenkins is back up, we can verify that the plugin is correctly installed by going into Manage Plugins and look on the Install tab and drill down to L. And here we can see we have the LeapTest integration plugin installed. The next thing to do is to create a new build definition or a project. So I click new item and enter a title like leap test Jenkins. I select a freestyle project in this case and click OK. This opens the new build definition and I now have the option of specifying where my code repository is and a lot more details about the build process. In this video, I will create a simple build definition that only triggers a test defined in LeapTest and not add anything more than that. In the build section, I add the LeapTest Jenkins plugin called LeapTest integration, like this, and I can now specify a few things. First, the server address, which is the location of the LeapTest controller. If you have downloaded a trial, it will by default install itself on port 9000 on localhost. And that's also where my LeapTest controller is installed. The report file is the name of the file used to write the result of the test automation to. The result from LeapTest is converted into JUnit format, which seems to be the preferred format in Jenkins. In the scheduled names section, you can specify one or more LeapTest schedules 
that you want to run as part of the build step. When you click select schedules, the plugin will do a lookup on the libtest server and give a list of all projects in the solution. If I expand the Jenkins project, I can see a Jenkins demo schedule that I can select. Before we select this schedule, let's just take a look into LeapTest and briefly see what a schedule actually is. Under the scheduling menu item, we have a list of all defined schedules in LeapTest. In this case, we have three schedules defined. A schedule defines that one or more test cases from a project, in this case Project Jenkins with a Jenkins case, should run on one or more environments. An environment is a definition of a machine where the test case should or could run, and it can both be a local machine, an internal workstation, or a cloud-based machine. In this case, I have selected a Source Labs cloud-based Windows 10 running with the latest version of Chrome to be my environment. By combining the test cases and the environments, we have an entity that matches the Jenkins integration very well. In Jenkins, you don't want to define the test cases and the machines where it should run. You basically just want to orchestrate that a test is started and that the result is coming back when the test is completed. Then Jenkins can react accordingly to the test result. If we turn to the overview drawing again, we can see that the schedule is the entity triggered from Jenkins. But Jenkins have no knowledge of what is tested and where it is tested. This is following the good principles of segregation of duty. In the build definition, let's select the schedule we just looked at. The next thing to do is to add a post build action that will read the test results and publish this into the Jenkins instance. I will add a publish JUnit test result report and specify report.xml. In the test report XMLs field. The value in this field should just match the file specified in the LeapTest plugin above. When I press save, we are now ready to run the build for the first time. I press build now and we see that the first build will now start. In LeapTest we can see the schedule go into status running which means the controller has picked up the test cases defined and are executing them on the environments defined. In Jenkins, you will see a progress bar while it's running. It seems like it's using the time from the previous build to calculate the progress, but I'm not entirely sure about this. The result file has been read and we can now inspect the result by clicking on the build. But before I do this, I want to start another build to get a little more data. So I click build now again, and then I go into the result of the first build. In here I get access to the test result page, and on this page I get information about the test run. In this case we only have one test case running, and it succeeded in 40 seconds. If I open the project again, We can see that the second build is now running and we have the progress bar that is based on the time it took from the first build. So now it's done and if I reload this page, we will see a graph or a trend graph that will show that the progress in the amount of passed and failed test cases as more builds are added. In this video we looked at how to download, install and configure the LeapTest plugin for Jenkins and we looked at what a schedule is in LeapTest. We also saw that the schedule, and thereby the test cases in LeapTest, was triggered from the Jenkins build, and a very brief look into how Jenkins handled test results. Thank you.